Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! The Shadonaku has been battling with his own health. I have multiple sclerosis. But this Christmas Eve, I wish to continue my rendition of the story of Jinma's daughter by Classical Gal, Original Concept and Parts of Chapter 1 by Nez and Effets. Chapter 4, Explorations. Our scene begins with Nadoka doing the dishes, of all things. We see that she's very willing to accept Ranma as a boy, if that's really what she what Ranma wants to be, since boy or girl, he's still her child. She hadn't seen Ranma since a day or two ago, and he returns some things to her. But then Rama comes to the door dressed as a girl and talks with her and said that she talked with Dr. Tofu and decided she wanted to at least experiment with being a girl. But firmly said that she'll understand, after it's explained that could conceivably be temporary as she's just experimenting so far. She understands Rama's concerns and shows immense respect for her power of choice on this issue. Especially when we consider the uh, premise which Nadoka was originally introduced in the Rama and Half franchise. This is particularly unusual. Mm. Then we find out that Akane, that Ronko wants to go shopping and ask if Nadoka would like to come along. And Nadoka is quite ecstatic. Then we see Ronko is getting overwhelmed. She thought she would need some underwear, a dress or two, and a couple of other things. Her mother had had other ideas, and Akane seemed to agree. They had gotten a ton of laundry, several pajamas, summer dresses, skirts, slacks, shorts, blouses, and tops, more swimming suits, a hair ornament or two, some jewelry. Uncle wore a, she now wore a simple charm necklace, some clip-on earrings. Ronko had refused to consider piercing when she hadn't decided to stay female yet. Several pairs of shoes, a new purse and wallet, some very basic cosmetics. And a staggering array of hair hair products. Including the shampoo that Kasumi had suggested previously. Well, uh, in the previous chapter. Rama had no idea what a triple bonding reconstructor was. Nor does it shout out the crew! <laughs> and they were still going strong. Ronko had no idea they were going to get it all home. Um, and considering the fact that he probably hadn't owned more than one or two pairs of clothes while he was on his long training journey, this was probably overwhelming. But the fact that her mother was having the time of her life almost made it worthwhile for her. Meeting up for 12 lost years, seeing her mother so happy was worth visiting every store in Nerman. <laughs> And it seems that a recurring theme of this, the show that Aku knows little about fashion himself being autistic, is that green goes well with red hair. I cannot say what to say about that. Then, miraculously, Rama gets hit, Ronko gets hit with hot water by accident while in the
changing booth that Ronka was in. Well, it was actually hot tea, but still had enough water in it. <laughs> and Ronka went into a panic, trying to avoid a boyish-sounding shout. And they had to politely ask for some cold water. Now! <laughs> Thankfully, the proprietors had been so apologetic for accidentally dumping tea all over Ronco, she insisted on giving them the dress and paying for the dry cleaning as well. It would be ready in a few days. Ronco said she had had to find a formal dinner dance to attend. Ronco had been pretty overwhelmed by it all. And discussed with Akane and her mother how she seems to be curse to attract cold water on the most unlikely of times, and now that she's trying to stay female, it's happening with hot water. So they decide to go to Cologne, who, though Shadow Ku may have mentioned this before, throughout this fic is a much more sympathetic figure than she is in some other Ronma Goes All Girl fanfics. Some of which she insists on turning Ronma into Shampoo's slave. <laughs> then throughout this... Then they go there and... Shampoo and Cologne startle seeing her dressed up as a girl... When they find out that Ronka is just experimenting, Cologne agrees that, yes, this probably would help her come to terms with everything and decide what she wants to do with her life. And Cologne discusses various options, such as the waterproof soap, the cat's tongue, and then decides on the cheese stone... Which, thankfully, has been weakened enough that it should only work for a month because its power has it's been removed from its source for long enough. But every time Rama uses it, Ronko uses it, there's a chance that it could work with its original undiluted strength. Ronko chooses to use it. She's, it's still, being a girl is still too new to her to embrace it forever at this point. So she thereupon decides to transform back into, so she decides to use it and then test hot water with it. Then... They see, uh, then Sayori and Yuka see Ronka going about, and they act like <laughs> Ronka's going about in girl form and dressed up like a girl. There's probably just some more of some strange thing she's up to. Who? Let's see. Who? <laughs> Yuka is complaining to Sayori, Ray, saying, Sayori Chan, this is so dull. We're playing Holmes and Watson. It's just to start summer break. Can't we do something else? <laughs> we can go to a movie or something. And then when they find out that Ron goes with her, Ron Ma, as they still call her, was with her mother. Who was teaching her how to act and talk like a girl? They're like, come in this way. No movie could top this. And then we get to see Ronko introduced to one of Nadoka's old friends. 
And when she found out that Ronica was raised as a girl, completely omitting, raised as a boy, completely omitting all references to magic and curses, incidentally, she was still horrified. How could he ever do that to his own daughter? Sayuri so and Yuka at first wondered maybe it's Rama's twin sister since she was so comfortable and so relaxed acting as a girl. Then we get this, then Ronko winds up meeting Sayuri and Yuka and they start talking and then the whole story of how of the curse, etc., curse, etc., 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 comes out, and they wind up meeting, and then Ron Co explains everything, and Sarah and Yuka wind up making friends with Ron Co, thinking that they shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Then they decide to go together into a photo booth. Get lots and lots of photos of each other made. And they have a lot of fun, and at the end of it, Sarah and Yuka say that they don't want to give odds of... Ronco coming back to school as a boy. They don't want to place bets either way, as it's so uncertain at this point. Over the next few days, Ronco and Akane went all over Tokyo. They go places like the Tokyo Tower, the Imperial Palace, etc., that most Tokyoites are bored stiff of by the age of 12. And Shampoo, after a while, decides to come along with them. And has to remind herself not to call Ronco, not to, to call Ronco, Ronco rather than Rama, and to call Akane, Akane rather than Violent Girl. Mm. It takes a bit, but... After a bit, they <laughs> wind up deciding to go along with Shampoo. Akane was in particular reluctant to take Shampoo with them. Then Shampoo winds up finding that she's very relaxed going along with Ronko like she's another girl. And then it, they wind up talking about cooking and... <sighs> Naruto wants that normal mother-daughter experience. Rama's is still a bit reluctant to go that far. Then she thinks, when the colleague says, "I'd love to help Rama learn to cook," ah, Daijin's gonna wait. This is an emergency. Emergency. Tai in day. Tai in day. Tai in day. And she tries to explain to her mother, Akane's cooking is really bad. As bad as in not edible. As in it could kill someone. I had to be rushed to the emergency room at least once. And strangely, Akane's borderline immune to cooking instruction. And it goes... On, there's a thing where they visit a bathhouse, and 
Ronco almost accidentally goes over to the bullet men's side of it. <laughs> the friend who was mentioned before thought that she had really been confused. How horrible. And... Ronco winds up fainting from being in too much hot water and winds up at the end saying that she would like next year to go back to the bathhouse. And it looks like Sarah and Yuka will be glad to stay with her. After fainting, Akane strangely calls Ronko young lady, saying, you're going to bed, young lady. But they, but she, having gone with shampoo to Disneyland, to Tokyo Disneyland, and her fears about being a girl have diminished, and it looks like she's finding that she's much more comfortable living as a girl. And Ronko, in the end of the chapter, says that she would like to do this, to go back here next year, too. And is uns. And we're left at the cliffhanger as the light. Oh, one other thing that I forgot earlier. Akane was thinking that Ronko is looking at the world almost like a child, and Ronko and Akane thought that in a way she was, as Jinma had really interfered with his child growing up healthily. Maybe, but well, I won't spoil it just yet. Kasumi was glad to have Ronko moving in with her mother over the weekend, over the summer, as this way, if Jinma ever comes back, they'll be able, they'll be able to have him live a wet place. Outside, that isn't under the same roof as Ronko slash Rama, but close enough they can meet to hope to reconcile. She's the only one in this point who thinks that's at all possible. And so our chapter comes to a close. Merry Christmas, everyone. And the, uh, and the gods, you see I have a Kami Donna on my wall. The Kami bless us all. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the Shadow Dotaku! Next chapter, we'll see... See, Ronko's summer vacation continue. Ronko shows... There's yet more evidence that she is truly a girl. We will all see it. Manifest. Fest and see an old enemy come forth and begin to become a friend and perhaps something more. Happy holidays from the Shadow Death of Coup.